Happy Halloween. Welcome back to another episode of Real Chums. We're chatting about movies feels like hanging out with friends. I'm your host, Marcel, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Danny. This week, we are finishing our month-long discussion on spooky, thriller, and scary movies with Scream 2. Directed by Wes Craven, written by Kevin Williamson, and starring Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, and Jamie Kennedy. In this episode, we'll explore the movie's meta-commentary on horror sequels, dissect its iconic characters, and share if this sequel beats the original. But before we roll that intro, make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Join in on the conversation by following us on YouTube at Real Chums or by going to realchums.com slash newsletter. With that being said, let's roll that intro. Right, let's kick things off today with a, a question of the day. You know, yes. that's how we do it. That's it's just how we go. Um, and I actually prepped a really, I feel like a pretty great <laughs> one. Okay, okay. We are talking Scream Two, and Randy reprises the role. We, I'm, I'm, uh-huh. I'm super pumped to talk about him. Um, but in the middle of the movie, uh, Randy, Dewey, and um, Gale. I'll sit on the bench and they get the phone call from the killer. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. So mm-hmm. during that phone call, the he, uh, he tries to like ask the killer what's his favorite scary movie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Then he doesn't answer the question. So the killer then asks him, "What's your scary? What's your favorite scary movie?" He starts r- rattling off some of these scary movies in this in this world. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you know what these? Uh, there is one, two, three, four, five. Six of them. I oh, no idea which <laughs> movies he's... I can't remember what he listed out. <laughs> no. Okay. okay. So I'm uh, trying to give... I'm going to give you... Uh, they're real movies. They're, they are not real movies. Oh, okay. They're like fake movies. <laughs> okay. I've prepped this... Uh, seven of them. <laughs> there are seven movies. Okay. Uh, I prepped them into a quiz. So uh, I'm going to read them out. You're going to tell me which one is the one that he mentions. Uh, yes. That Randy mentions. Because he's talking about... He's talking about movies uh, that also happen on, on a campus, right? Yes. Go. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, up first, Poltergeist, Ashes of Midnight, Smile, or Showgirls? Which of those does he mention? Which is the one that he mentions? You said Poltergeist. Pol- Ashes of Midnight, Smile, and Showgirls. Ashes of Midnight. Eh. Uh, showgirls it's terrifying is what he says oh yeah you're right yeah yeah okay all right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i should have made that one a little easier it's okay <clears throat> no, no okay, uh yeah. okay uh round two we have green room halloween the faceless ones and the house on sorority row house on sorority row ding 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 winner winner or chicken dinner all right next we have uh ghost ship Crimson Key, Silent Screams, Dorm That Dripped Blood. Dorm That Dripped Blood. I remember that <laughs> ding, one. Ding, ding, ding. Yep. All right. Uh, we have third, The Shining, Haunting of Hollow Creek, Trick or Treat, Splatter University. Splatter University. Ding, 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 ding. Well done. All right. We have The Omen, Fright Night, The Gritting Doll, Graduation Day. Right night, the what doll? The grinning doll. The grinning doll or graduation day. It was graduation day. Well done. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have the mirrors, curse, whispers of the cellar. It follows in final exam. Yeah, a final exam. Well done, my guy. I, I, I do remember because he starts listing off these movies. I'm like, these movies all sound fake. No, they're real movies. And I, I like I remember like searching, but it's because they're all movies that take place on campus and this movie's taking place on a campus. So the meta ness of it all. Um Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're like very like op- obscure horror movies from like eighties and nineties and, and so on and so forth. But I've never heard of any of these. Yo, Until I looked them up. You, I mean, the fact that I didn't realize they were real. <laughs> I was like, I think these are real. And then I was like, I uh, d- didn't have time to do full research. 
But uh, great. I'm glad yeah. you did. Yeah, I, I looked it up. <laughs> While I was getting this prepped? No. Sure. No, it was when, sure. he, when he was no. listening to them up. I'm like, these movies sound... They, they sound fake. They sound fake. But I'm like, no. Scream franchise is very aware of what it is and referencing other movies. They have to be real. And then I, as he was listening, I'm like, what are they? And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, these are real. Yeah. I'm going to have to go look. So uh, I thought it was great that they – there. look, we – Getting into this movie, look, we 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 loved the first one. Uh, yes, it was a lot of fun. In fact, you watched this one right after we watched the, we did the episode. Yeah, so last year we watched the first one, um, and then as soon as I watched this, is what I, I was just hooked. I loved. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back watch it because I just loved the first scream, and then I just was like, I I need more. So I watched the second one right right away. I was gonna keep going and watching them all, but I'm like. Nah, maybe I'll just wait. I might actually go back and like start watching them now because I, I really enjoy and love these movies. I also agree. Um, so uh, I don't think we're. I don't want to talk too much about like our relationship with this because we kind of talked about it in the first yeah. one. Uh, most of these we haven't seen. I actually had seen Scream the the, the latest twenty two the twenty twenty two and or and yes. So in any case. Let's um, give a quick synopsis. Yes. Do you have, give it a what? Yeah. So uh, we're in Scream 2. Uh, Sydney Prescott is trying to move on with her life uh, in college. This is two years after the events of, of Scream. Uh, but she soon finds herself once again the target of a mass killer. As the body count rises, the killer's motives become tied to the rules of horror sequels. I love that scene with Randy. Oh, it's so good. Um, which makes Sydney and her friends question who they can trust. Okay, so the question that I have that I want us to answer at the end of this is ultimately, does this movie be- join, is this, be- is this sequel better than the original? We'll talk about it at the end of the movie. We'll talk about it at the end of the and, movie. And uh, yeah. we'll give our thoughts. So, um, I have, okay, so first off, uh, this was the first time I watched it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I okay. Didn't, I didn't watch it after, so, uh, uh-huh. but I did watch it twice. Okay. Um, so, Absolutely fantastic! I loved, I loved, I loved it. I thought the jump scares. Uh, so we're gonna go uh, for those of you who are new. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some things we liked, we didn't like. You know, rattle off some thugs. We'll take a quick break and then get into the meat and potatoes of our thoughts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, here here are my things. I absolutely loved that. It's like just owning the meta ness of what they started in the first one. Yeah. They they kind of have it there and they just solidify it even more so. And I it has made me appreciate the most recent screams uh, more because they also do it too. But like, and it's always been that way, but the fact that, you know, that it's just there in, in, in so much that they made a movie about the first movie for this movie yeah. is just phenomenal. Uh, so for me, I absolutely love that. Um, I, lo- I like the jump scares better in this film. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, the only thing that kind of, um, the, the I'm torn. I'm not sure if I don't like it or, or if I'm like, it's like, it just fits is the, is Dewey and Gail's re- <laughs> re- stupid, dumb relationship. Uh, uh, and also the FBI or the police involved in this. They're just so dumb. They're just the worst. It's campus, campus cops, dude. They're, they're, they're the worst always. <laughs> Any campus police in this country is the worst. Uh, don't add us. <laughs> don't add us. Um, okay, cool, cool. So I'll tell you what I absolutely love about this movie. I, I, I love uh, the the meta awareness of it all. Right. The, I love that the movie immediately starts off with, and we'll talk about it. Like sequels are never. Be- better than the originals, right? And so, like, we have this conversation. I love that the movie, like sets that expectation and we'll talk about whether if it was better than the original right but but we see it from the movie that they're that they're making from them talking about it themselves uh i just love i love how these two movies continue to lean into like this meta awareness of what they're doing um i absolutely absolutely love the uh, sarah michelle geller's death in the frat house 
Oh, yes. Okay. It is just really good. I love the tension, the the play back and forth. Uh, very reminiscent to the first Scream. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, Chef's Kiss for me, my favorite scene by far, or killing, death, whatever you want to call it, is uh, I, I just love when Gail and Dewey are at, at the university and like this whole, like they get split up, they go into the soundproof room, they can't hear the beating and the killing of, of or so we think, of a stabbing of Dewey, right? Like, I just love that entire sequence. It is, it, it is. The killings in this film, in this, ver- in the second one, it, I, to me, I like way more. Yeah. Way more. But that one was just like, it's so good. Like, he just starts projecting them. <laughs> And they're like, wait, what? And, and then they go after him and just like the uh, Gale hiding between. Uh, it was just good. Um, what I don't like about this movie. <clears throat> and we're, we're going to get into this. <laughs> I don't like how they treated Randy. Okay. Oh, okay. I have feelings. And I, I know guess. I know this was a big issue when this movie came out. I have very strong feelings about this. Uh, and we're going to talk about it. But I think I, I genuinely think that's maybe... The only issue I have with this movie is just Randy. No, that and I felt Timothy Oliphant's final appearance, and look, full spoilers ahead, um, the reveal of him, I felt like he was leaning too much to uh, Billy from the first movie. And I was just like, ah, Timothy, like, tone it down, man. I love Timothy Oliphant, but like, in... Like, this is probably, like, the only uh, portrayal of his at the very end where I was just like, ugh. You know, I I think I agree. I I don't know if he was... I felt... It felt out of left field. Yeah. Uh, I can see where he's pulling from. Like, he's... I mean, just... There's a lot to to be said that we can talk about. uh, We're going to be talking about. But to me, I also felt like it, it felt really strong. Um yeah it, but other than that like i love this movie and i i know it doesn't have as high of a rating as scream i don't know i i love these two just this much equally as much all right with that being said we're gonna take a quick break uh after a word from us thanks for listening to real chumps before we jump into the full discussion of this episode we wanted to invite you to join our email list where twice a month we share what we've been watching our TV and movie recommendations, and commentary on the biggest headlines in the movie industry directly to your inbox. This is just the start of what we have planned for our content. By subscribing, you're getting the best seats in the house for what's to come. So head over to realchumps.com slash newsletter to sign up today. Now back to the show. All right, so let's jump back into this. Let's start off with like the characters. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's great. Okay, I look, we, we raved last year about Nev Campbell's performance. She continues to just amaze me. Like she b- slays, both, dude. I'm- both Nev and the character of Sydney. Like I, I see why people love this character so much. Yeah, you know these twenty plus years. Um, I see why people were up in arms when she didn't come back for the la- latest movie, and why people are so happy that she's coming back now. Right, like. I have fallen in love with this character. I think I think she's awesome. I just I also love like how we start this when we see her on screen and someone's prank calling her, and she just doesn't like it doesn't fade her like it doesn't phase her anymore. She gets these phone calls all the time. People are constantly pranking her, and to her like she experienced something extremely traumatic. Yeah. But to her, she's just like whatever. Like like I have call her ID, <laughs> and then the guy on the line like freaks out and hangs up. Right. Like I love, I love seeing Sydney, Sydney's growth from the first movie to this movie. Where in the first one, understandably and justifiably, is scared. She's strong, of course. Yeah. But she is definitely a lot stronger here now, and more confident, and and just kind of like a rock star. Like she she knows what she's gone through. And and it's not gonna face her. She's ready to move on, has moved on, and is doing her life. I just love this growth, this characterization of Sydney Prescott, and, and and Nev Campbell is just as always incredible. 
I couldn't say it, I couldn't say it better myself. I to me, I was actually this is the thing that I was like a little bit worried about, just saying like how are they going to portray, you know, uh, Sydney as as we go in. One, I just love that we have jumped. I don't know, like three years, two years, yeah, two years, yeah. two years. Uh, we jumped two years, uh, and they've kind of like the aftermath of it is kind of it's still there, but it's not like the end of the world, right? They've 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 moved on, but like you said, uh, she is a strong. Uh, female she is she understands she's taking her life for she's moving her life forward she's not letting it dictate and mm-hmm. control her which i think is phenomenal and she still but she still has she still stays in touch with the people that that are that you know that survived <laughs> yes <laughs> that are still alive <laughs> that are still living um and uh, so to me phenomenal i'm excited to talk about how she plays out this film with uh, some of these other characters, like Gail Weathers. Uh, Courtney Cox returns, uh, obviously a staple of this film. <laughs> she's just raking in whatever money she's. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how much. I mean, I don't. She uh, is Gail Weathers, and I kind of I don't know where I'm at with how I feel about her. Uh, I've, I was like oh, freaking Gail, uh, but she kind of wins me over at some point with 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 Dewey. Um, and her change of heart of realization of I think th- this is where I think I think what's great is we get si- both of Sydney and Gail's uh, portrayals um, we're we we're, they're reset for us from the beginning of the film at really good places for them to grow throughout the rest of the film and I really appreciate that I think that's what I, what ultimately what I think is great between the two of them I think they also do a great job of. Uh, of obviously continuing the growth of these characters, Sydney, uh, um, Gail, Dewey, etc. But I feel like they do a fairly good job at also in, inter, like interjecting these new characters. I, I feel like they do a really good job at like introducing and bringing in new characters. Right? I love that we get more interaction from from Lee Schreiber's character. We saw him very quickly in the first movie. Uh, as cotton weary and 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 they do a <sighs> remind me i can because i didn't watch screen one again what did what where, what did he play in the first one was he part of the school no he he was uh sydney was accused him of being the one that killed uh her mom that's so, right okay, so he was I like remember. he was like barely like in a like 10 seconds in the news segment uh saying that he was innocent and whatnot right um <clears throat> so that that was him and then in this movie He's been uh, released, yeah, exonerated, exonerated, yeah, yeah. etc. Um, <clears throat> but they also like I love how the script does a really good job of like continuing, like I was saying, continuing to grow these characters, introduce new ones, but also make us con- like be suspicious of everyone. Oh, I couldn't. Yes, I love that we're like oh. It, it could it could be Derek, it, the, it, yeah, you know the the boyfriend, right? Or uh, oh, is it is it Con, you know Cotton coming back? Is he trying to bring revenge, <laughs> right? So I just truly uh, could it even be Randy for freaking maybe he he loses his screw loose. Yeah, yeah, and 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 like, <coughs> and 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 that's why like I I I love the structure of these movies, and I'm excited. I hope the. I know the third one is probably like the the least liked one, but like I hope that this franchise doesn't lose that I don't know if it's that charm or that that ability to like in in interject new characters, grow existing characters and make everyone suspicious uh, a suspect, right? Um and and this movie like does that so perfectly. <coughs> Let's talk Derek though. Yeah. I don't like it. De- I like, but I don't like Derek. I was- He's too pretty, dude. Like the the man from the get go. I'm like, okay, this guy looks like he literally was a cookie cutter. Came out of Barbie's world. <laughs> <laughs> I've. I don't think I. I'm sure I've seen Jerry O'Connell and other stuff, but like, I don't know. I don't know about if I have. He would obviously. Went downhill from this movie. No, I'm just kidding. He's a good-looking guy. The thing is, like, I don't, I don't know what other films he's in. Um, he, he just feels too. Is this his first film? That's, <coughs> that's all I know. No, <coughs> excuse me. He was a 
pretty big deal having worked in um before this what was it S sliders he's known for sliders can't hardly wait can't hardly wait he was in there. that one he was in jerry Maguire. oh that's where i know him from joe's apartment yeah 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 he's but the thing is for me i i don't know I think for me, in him in, in this movie particularly, I I think part of it for me is that I feel like he slightly feels like he's trying to take a spotlight. Like if or and I don't know if that's him or if it's the way, like because he's a tall dude, like he's tall. Yeah. Um, the way his presence on on camera when he's on camera, it feels like he's he just he just dominates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and maybe that's just me thinking about like. Okay, framing wise and just overall uh, how things are like in a lot of shot scenes, like he shows up, especially in that those moments where Derek is trying to help comfort mm -hmm. Sydney. Like he'll show up and he like takes up a good chunk of the fr of the framing. <clears throat> but I also think that's on purpose because they linger on him, right? I don't he, disagree. He, he just happens to show up. He even says, "Oh, sorry, I'm late." Right after, right after we see the Sarah Michelle Geller death, right? And so like. <clears throat> We linger on him to to make us think that he might be one of the killers, right? Or the killer. So, like, I, I, I think in watching it the second time, I was like, I see what you're doing, camera tricks. I see what you're doing, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you're yeah, making yeah, me yeah. want to think that he's the, the killer. Um, but he, he does carry this. And maybe this might have been, like, direction from, from Wes Craven or, or whatever. But, like... He does seem a bit suspicious. It's the eyes. And it's very mm. different from Billy from the first movie. Billy, immediately, I was like, this guy is the killer. I just know who he <laughs> is. Uh, he, he has this, like, anger, right? Billy did. Whereas uh, Derek, there's, he is pretty, right? He's very handsome. But there's something in his eyes that he plays with. And I think that's great. Like, I, I really like him. I think my... I, I do like the character. I don't know if if uh, Sydney Prescott ever gets married in the future. Um, and if she doesn't, that's bad because Eric is a good guy. I just – maybe what I, what I don't like about him comes from that singing scene. Why oh, well, did we break on. out into singing? Why not, bro? No, Thank no, 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 no. <laughs> I know this was a thing in late 90s. Movies, the wedding, uh, uh, my best friend's wedding did this. Okay, <laughs> I, I under, I get, I guess that's what thing that happened in the late nineties, but it does not work for me. The him singing, I was like, trying, okay, I was trying to think. Did did uh, what was Zach Efron? In? Oh, in uh, Seventeen again, he didn't have a singing thing, right? No, no, no. Look, um. It did happen, and I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like, uh, cringe, as the kids would say. Uh, so that does not age well, which is fine. It I don't does know, not age I well. don't know if it even worked back. Th it probably did. It probably did. It was <laughs> in the 90s. Uh, Marshall has the, still has the black lung? I still have the black lung. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. Um, I No, I, I think what, what happened was that the Weinstein brothers were like, oh, look, it worked so well in these other movies. <laughs> Let's interject the singing. That's so funny. Cast singing everyone here. Um, but I, I do like the character. And, and I do think his death at the end, I'm just like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Derek. It's sad to see you go, man. It's sad to see you go. But not too sad. <laughs> um, just kidding. Let's talk. Let's I want to talk. I want you say Randy. Randy. I was going to go do, but I, I want to know. What is it? Where, where are you at with Randy? What are your feelings? What? Um. Glad that he came back. Yeah, super glad that he came back. Right. Um, I obviously he. You have this very pivotal character that that uh, provides this meta commentary for you. Right. Right. They're in class. The teacher's having a discussion about sequels, and him and Timothy Oliphant get into this discussion about whether sequels are ever better if they're not good they list off movies but the, immediately we're being told I, I love that the movie says look check your expectations because yeah 
sequels never are, aren't ever as good as the originals. But then you have the other discussions. No, they are. Aliens, Terminator 2. Looks like someone has a hard on for James Cameron. <laughs> I love that line. I love that line. <laughs> right? But like there is this idea of of having this character that is providing that meta narration or commentary and and is giving us is telling us what we want to say out loud. Right? He did that perfectly in the first movie. Mm-hmm. He does it here. At, in setting the expectations for a sequel, but also as we're talking about what makes a sequel better, more killings, more intricate deaths, uh, more suspects, right? He does that so well. And it's such a beloved character as well. My opinion, that when you have a pivotal and beloved character, it's okay to kill them off, but don't make it so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Make it, make it longer, I guess. Like, play it out. I think it's a disservice to us fans that like this character for him to go out so quick. Okay, I, okay. I actually, I'm going to argue with that because I don't necessarily think that he was quick. I actually felt that this was probably one of, to me, this was my, because my favorite death. Because it was so shocking. To me, it felt, I felt like it had a really good impact. Yeah. And I think part of it is like, there's those like the, they they've so like you said Randy's come in he's set the understanding they're having a discussion to say okay if this is going to be a sequel and he's redoing these things like trying to have a discussion of who's going to be the killer like who's, mm-hmm. who's who's next right um the other fact is that like he gets the call and it's the killer and they're go now the tension is built as they're Gail we know from the very beginning with Jada Pinkett Smith, Smith, who's up there and gets is, uh, you know, never should split up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Yep, yep. They're splitting up in broad daylight uh, to try to find somebody with a phone, right? <clears throat> Gail and Dewey go out and think. Randy's by himself. Um, and that, like, to me, I think to a degree, I feel like we don't know if he's actually, I mean, he could. There could be a, you know, it's like, the thing for me, as I, you know, as you build up, I'm like, is he going to be actually murdered, or is he going to have a, a tussle, and then, you know, like maybe he gets away, and they're like so, something, blah blah blah, right? Yeah. He he gets killed, and it's to me, it's uh, I actually think it was like, like I actually, part of it is like I I love that he gets pulled in the van, so it's like even more if more mysterious in the fact because like. We've already starting to wonder if the black dr- van driver yeah is the is the killer is the yeah. killer you know he has some sort of connect maybe he might be because he disappears at different times and whatnot um, and it's their van right mm-hmm. and so um, him and the fact that like why would you kill Randy like this <laughs> uh, it's it's he gets pulled in I I just think like it's they don't show anything they just you know it's like. Oh! Uh, uh, and then the blood's dripping off the van. So much blood, by the way. <laughs> so much blood. <laughs> Out of that and it's van. just like uh, there, right? And I, I think, uh, I I guess to me, what I'm saying is like I don't necessarily like, maybe it's not the best because I'm thinking through as I, I'm like because it is the the sound booth is like freaking the sound phenomenal. Booth is awesome. It's phenomenal. Um, but I do think it's I think it's a worthy death for Randy. Um, I don't think it is. <laughs> I I feel like they. I'm I'm not saying that that whole like. The shock value is there, and okay. I, and I, I like fair. that. That's... I like that because I wasn't. I was like, no, th- this is a staple character. Like he's going to continue. Um, <clears throat> so the shock value is there. I appreciate that. Way to subvert my expectations. Okay, maybe that's what it comes down to. I feel like. He just gets taken. We don't see him. Not, and maybe I do want to see him. Like, look at the Dewey's going back to the sound booth, right? Dewey, who is also beloved by people, I guess. By Gail. By Gail. No, he's be- he beloves Gail. Yeah. We take the time to like see the reaction from Gail. He's you know reaching for life and like he's getting stabbed, and we take time with that death. He survives. Um, but we don't have that, and then and then and then it's just like, 
then it, the scene cuts and then they're just carrying taking the body out and it's like oh, that's it like we don't spend time for with this character and, and look i'm just gonna give you two examples okay stranger things people felt cheated when season one when barbara okay justice for barbara there was a whole <laughs> campaign on social media now. right Everyone fell in love with her, and she died, and, like, no one mentioned her at all ever again until, and then in season two, we had a little thing for her. Um, or even most recent in the latest season, um, we, they introduced us to that one character played by, what's his name? Let me look it up. Um, he's the leader of, like, the, of the D&D group. Um, I don't know. He's playing. He's playing uh, the new. Let me pull him up. Joseph Quinn. Um, he's playing the new uh, Fantastic Four. Johnny Johnny Storm. Uh, yeah. Okay. This guy. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> What's his character's name? Anyways, Joseph Quinn's character. Um, he has a beautiful like arc in in mm-hmm. season five, and then he sacrifices himself at the end mm-hmm. to distract the flying demons yeah. away from the kids by playing the hardcore Metallica song, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and like that's a beautiful death. It's it's the shock value because we weren't expecting him to die because we fell in love with him, but we but the script allowed for us to spend time with him in his death. Okay, and make it meaningful. Whereas here, it was just get snatched, blood, and then we cut, and it's like that's too bad. I can't believe he died, and nothing. Okay, I feel right. I think that's what it is. Like the shock value for his death is good. Yes, the 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 fact that he's a staple, that he was a mainstay of the initial crew, uh, and that the one sorority girl that is gets a better death than him. Is is messed up? Yeah. Okay, I I, I agree with that. Um, good stuff. I'm okay. curious to see who takes on that mantle, so yeah. to speak, in the next in in the rest of the movies. I think that's what the shock value is like. If these movies are so meta aware, who is going to be that individual that provides that commentary? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I knew all they do. I mean. I, they always add new people into the, the in, into the roles, which I think is really phenomenal. And I do believe, and I don't know if this is the one, but poli- more police get involved later on in okay. some of the other ones. Anyways, um, okay, I want to take a break from some of the characters, and I want yeah. to talk about overall some of the things. Uh, so let's talk about um, some some moments. Um, opening scene, okay, Jada Pickett Smith. And Phil? No. Uh, Omar Phil, oh, Sai? Yeah, Omar Sai. Look. <coughs> absolutely. Again, super aware. Black guy, uh, black people are not often found in, in scary, you know, like the scary movie trope of the token white black guy or whatever. Um, the opening, the, the fact that the kill of Omar, him getting stabbed in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Literally got me so good. Did it? So good. Did it not get you? It, uh, I just, I was like, dude, what are you, why? I was like, no, he's going to die. He leans his, he puts his ear up against the, the stall. I'm like, of course you're going to get stabbed. Okay. Of okay. course you're going to oh. get stabbed. You, you don't ever. <laughs> Public service announcement right here. <laughs> People, if you hear something happening in the stall next to you, don't put your ear up against the, up against the stall to listen. You just don't. One, it's unsanitary. Two, there might be someone ready to kill you. Or in three, it's unsanitary. Just, you deserve to die. <laughs> Don't. That was glorious. Thank you for joining for our PSA. Uh, <laughs> sponsored by Clorox Wipes. Um, no, I, so the opening I just, I truly love that one, okay, they're going to see Stab, which becomes the movie franchise throughout the next several films. It's it, it becomes the cult movie f- that for a lot of uh, of horror genre. The other aspect is this: the amount of nuttos <coughs> and the studios sending white face costumes. Yeah, that's just asking for somebody to come out and kill somebody. It's just asking for somebody. 
<laughs> also, I was thinking as I was watching this, I was like, I would hate to be in that theater. Absolutely. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, why am I in a theater full of people who I could, that could literally, like, and they're all like fake stabbing. Like, of course someone's going to come out and actually kill somebody. Like, come on. Uh, but so, it's, it's such a great scene. It is. I love that the re emphasizing the fact that it understands that the, from the beginning, from the first film, it's a, it's meta commentary. Now we have like triple meta inception. Yeah. Because we have the film that we watched from last, <laughs> the, from screen one in their own version in the film that they're watching off now, setting the tone for the next for the sequel and all the meta ness that comes from 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 that, and 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 like the and the movie, I wish I would have leaned a little bit more into this. But like, what what is this movie? We, we can dissect this a little bit. This opening scene, like the, immediately, I'm like, what, what is it trying to tell us? That we as a society glorify violence, murderers, uh-huh. right? And then we see that later with the big reveal, right? Like Timothy's character. He says, "Like courtroom, courtrooms are are decided by the media. Like I'm going to play this role, and people are going to be fascinated by me and whatnot, right? Because I think it's maybe it's improved. This was definitely the case in the '90s, right, with the O.J. Simpsons, and and even more recently with the Menendez brothers. Right now with yeah, the Netflix kick, stuff, back up, there. yeah, yeah, huge. So like, I think." Media has portrayed this and and news specifically to glorify and 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 give this attention to killers and murderers, and that's what this opening scene is doing, right? People are are not only are they going to watch this, they're celebrating it, and also like look, this might this might also be a little bit showing my my feelings towards like murder podcasts, like. There is a very specific group of content creators and listeners that listen to this. And is that is that also another means of, of us as viewers glorifying these stories and these killers, right? And I love that the movie hints at that through the sequel, through the way people are behaving, through the motives of the killer, of Timothy, of Timothy's uh, actions. But it doesn't quite, I don't think it ever gets there. It doesn't, the, the pair isn't there. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think that, the, like, it's kind of there. Like, they kind of, it could have been there. Yeah. And I think where it could have been there is if Timothy's character, what is his name? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Tim- Timothy's characters, uh, if he had played some other role within the, if he was like part of the friend group or part of like th- th- what who the people who get involved in this thing, right? He's there, mm-hmm. kind of hanging out, doing this weird <laughs> documentary thing, or uh, you know, from the film class, and he's got a hard on for James Cameron, um, <laughs> Mickey, and, mi- yeah, Mickey. Yeah. So you know, having Mickey's character play there, but not having him. Like, perhaps be the, like, you know, it could have been better of him, like, making the commentary. Like, he, like you said, at the end, he's like, look, this is going to be glorious. I'm going to go to trial. It's going to be, just it, the media decides what's going to happen. And people are going to see that, oh, this was all of, mis- this was, quote, this is circumstance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? And that that is going to be the motive for him to then be let go. All these, like, the idea, and the idea of him being famous being on national television full attention all of that just but again it's like but why did he want to do this in the first place right yeah yeah um and so my thing is like if he had some of the role that he plays where he's almost like he plays the uh, he's like he, he's the commentary on the other side mm-hmm. like meta e like giving commentary on like oh this you know um you know placing i don't know just all the other com- giving comments of like Inf- informing and like trying to help provide there, but I think that I don't know. It could be that he just never. It would just would never. It, it would have. Everyone. Ah, oh, this one is played it played yeah. out as well, right? They're trying to like hold hold the full reveal of who the killer is, right? Who it was, yeah. Um, yeah. I I love also going back to that like uh, that scene 
in at school with the film professor, they talk about how uh, <clears throat> if movies are responsible for their actions, right? Yes. Okay. So I okay. I want to circle back to your comment about the fact that like, is this you know is this the commentary on the fact that like we as Americans glorify violence and the fact that you mentioned and I I actually. There's a you know I worked in news and the the, the news phrase is if it bleeds it leads. Okay. <laughs> Did you not hear? Have you never heard this? Uh, I haven't heard this phrase. Yeah. So in news, there's this thing if it bleeds it leads, meaning if someone if death there's injury any sort of thing like that, that's gonna be the main story. Uh -huh. Right. And it just at the end of the day, that's like they that's where you're gonna put you know up in front 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 and center. Yeah. And like this film is a a wonderful depict that like Gail shows up she. She's an opportunist. She yeah. um, has captivated not only a book, but has gained movie rights to some degree uh, on the things that have happened. Uh, she, what did she say at one point? Like, they're not going to cancel these movies. It's great publicity, right? Exactly. And But she's also up in front and center, you know, trying to get the story and trying to be there, but then becomes the story because she's in, so involved mm -hmm. and getting as, what's it like to be part of the story, right? This comment. <clears throat> but on top of that, like we, like the idea, I think you bringing up the Menendez brothers, oh, perfect example. Literally almost, I would say, I don't know if it's during this time frame, but like once a year, some new crime documentary yeah. gets popped and it then becomes the mass hysteria over all of America, mm -hmm. top in the top five of the streaming platforms. And then not only that, there's like four of one on each of the streaming platforms, yep. a version of it on all the, cause they all like took notes and said like, Hey guys, we're going to coordinate this. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what happened there, but like that's that it is right. So they have this, they have these things happen. And then one of two things happen. One, the story's brought up again. Causing lots of new stirring, stirring the pot with media, saying brand new Netflix documentaries brought up the Menendez brothers. Right? I saw like, does Menendez brothers are they? Uh, was it uh, are they murderers or cursed? Like the same thing that happened when they were kids. Yeah. Right. So all of this, you know, bringing up the storm uh, with different things, or it brings up the conversation: were they? Were was everything actually done? Right. And I'm not to say, look, I don't want to say that individuals are out there trying to like tell share other share the stories of individuals who may may actually be innocent innocent yeah of course should you know they should be told um you know adan like it, when and at the end of the day like our justice systems are not perfect the technologies can can really ch change the, the the measure the outcome uh because actual information that is important pertaining to the uh, to the case mm -hmm. is there but at the end of the day the obsession that this movie portrays is a hundred percent relevant to today. Oh yeah, and I think it's a little disturbing that, like, I think that's part of why this these films still resonate so hard with us. That's a good point. <clears throat> that's a good point. And it's and it's it's funny because going that scene with the professor, right, and, and that discussion, it's Mickey who becomes uh, one of the killers, right? It's Mickey who keeps saying, "No, like." Um, the these killings are, are are being patterned by previous killings, where now uh, killers have been immortalized. He says they've been immortalized through these film, through this movie, right? Yes. And so it's yeah. this he, and yet he's the one that's, in, he's copying them and and taking this, uh, taking on the mantle of, of Ghostface, right? But it's just funny or interesting that this movie in 1990 when did it come out? Ninety-seven <clears throat> is posting this question of is is our movies responsible for the violence that we see? Do movies glorify violence? It's the same conversation we're having now, right? Dude, still like I remember someone I had a really conversation like I don't want my kids playing any violent games because like you know like it's this is the same conversation yeah. my mom had with me. Yeah, and I'm out there. Listen, you know, and I don't. I don't know there if there's an answer. I at the end of the day, like it's it, it, I, I don't know. It's like it's at the end. It's like is it nurture or is it or, or nature? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and yeah. at the end, you know, some people it could be nurture, and some people it might be nature, and uh, situ it might be a you know a nurturing 
life that triggers something that you know that then causes whatever but at the end of the day it, it like what i do know is w people have the ability to choose it like that it's there right and i think to me in this film uh the you know his choice to do this to to you know mickey's decision to try to become a killer is crazy <laughs> it this, is crazy the, the, like one the reveal that that um uh billy's mom is the like semi uh is the mastermind and she was the like she was a reporter she was like the fake she was the one that like did the took the class in the front row with gail right with gail yeah yeah so t to me the fact that like sydney didn't even see her until the end it's, I remember the first time I was watching, I'm like, why didn't Sydney recognize her? Like, it's because she, they purposely, on the script, made sure that they were never, they never saw each other until the very end. But yes. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Hard for me to believe that this person, who, during these, all these, <laughs> all, these murder starts happen and she's like following Gail around at, you know, any sort of spot that, because like Sydney, like when she first sees Gail, I'm pretty sure she's there, but I mean, not. She may not be there. I don't know. No, she they she like walks away before before Sydney ever sees the mom. Oh, I'm so glad you watched that because I, I, I yeah you're right you're yeah. right it, she does. She's always like sneaking. Oh, I gotta go get. I gotta go report this or I gotta go do this or whatever. And she always like sneaks away right after. Um, so I, I mean, I, and I also see what they were doing right there. Who who is it? Is it Mike Myers' mom that? became one of the killers as well in, in those movies. Um, so I see like the callback uh, to to what they're doing, right? The meta, again, the meta awareness to it all. Um, I I don't know. I, I think... I mean, I think, it, I think the, it's the, fine. the discussion with, with this is, is great. I mean, it's, it's that's why they're still relevant. I think they're yeah. still great. It's there. Um, let's talk um, horror elements just a little bit the, this film definitely i feel like overall um had some better jump scares had better i think suspension and some like um i don't know i think they they did a really great job at keeping me on my toes for for what was going to happen did you guess the the did, did you have an, any idea of who the killer was i did i knew that it was timothy you knew it was mickey oh yeah i absolutely yeah what gave it away for uh, you like <coughs> this is what this is what gave it away okay timothy playing kind of a brooding he wasn't playing i think he was too brooding in in the during the movie conversation and then later when he had the camera and he didn't he, they had him in it was during it was during the singing scene when he's like there and he kind of is like he he just felt like he was they he felt out of place okay it's for me okay and then um and i just i don't know he when he pulls the reveal i do think it was like oh this is it really made him feel it was real real aggressive with the the Billy replica like the reveal of the 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 ghost face mask coming up and he's just like <laughs> oh my gosh, his face his his whole acting that in that last scene um it's yeah. a, it's a little over the top it's over the top yeah that's my biggest issue with it um yeah i i i ass i get i wouldn't say i was like 100% it's him but i was definitely like i think it's mickey just from the from Randy's death, right? Because he was filming, uh, I can see you, and then they got a c copy of, the, of like the tape, right? Yeah. Because I figured, uh, I think it's Randy because he wants to be a filmmaker, and now he's using his filmmaking techniques to uh, keep an eye on everyone, etc. So I I, I, I will say I I, feel, I thought it was going to be Derek and Mickey. Mm -hmm. Like Derek. Oh, okay. So I thought they were. I didn't think they were going to go back to the boyfriend. I was like, nah. This movie is so aware of itself that going back to the boyfriend as one of the killers—that's just now. Nah. They won't. That's yeah. that's cheap. 
They well, and that's do that. the thing. It's like at, so at one point, I'm like, I think maybe are they gonna do Derek and and, yeah. and Mickey? Anyways, um, going back to like horror elements. Again, we, we we've talked about that scene with with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Okay, the back and forth, the cat and mouse play that they've got going on. It, it's so perfect in building tension. We know that she has this uh, this boyfriend that she always goes back to, apparently, and everyone tells her to dump him, and and, and, and like she gets a call from Ghostface, right? And and we know we see Ghostface in the house, right behind her. She doesn't see him, and it's just it. I love when the movie, when a horror movie like this, lets me in on what is happening, but not the character. Because yeah. I know what's about to happen, it builds that tension, that suspense, and then the the death is just so so I don't know rewarding. <laughs> well, here's here's my thing. I think what I love about this whole the this scene is that um, we get the phone call blonde death mm-hmm. that we also get with Drew Barrymore from the first one, right? But it's like call back. Right to the, the the first one, she's home alone at her sorority. Yeah, not home at her, you know whatever, having the call, um, and it uh, it the this being because this is the first kill, the first the sec, the first death after the, the first theater. yeah uh, on campus on yeah. campus first kill on campus right yeah. and so to me I just I don't know it just it feels so good it feels it also I also really appreciate that it's not it he stabs her. She gets stabbed, but also gets pushed off. Yeah, yeah. Right. So like, it's not it's not quite a full copycat, right? Yes. One thing that I'm loving about these movies, I love when Ghostface is just Ghostface is just an idiot, right? I love seeing Ghostface like trip over himself, <laughs> right? I, I, there's again in the first one, it's these two teenagers who are just a bunch of losers, okay? And there are times when like Sydney gets the best of them, like kicks them, and like you see them stumbling. I love, and I hope these movies continue to do that, right? That these are just amateur killers, that yeah. they're they're going to trip over themselves, that. They knock a vase over or whatever it is. Like I love that element, and we see that in 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 this death scene with Sarah Michelle Gellar, right? Because like he's going up the stairs, he trips, like he can't figure it out, and and it's I love it's comedic, yeah. It's funny, and it just it adds to this to this world building mm-hmm. that it is just an amateur copycat, right? From a bunch of teenagers from the originals who were a bunch of teenage idiots, right? So I love that aspect. But that scene, the element of having the phone and her wanting to leave and she can't get a hold of the cops because she's out of range. Yeah. It's so good. Like it's it's simple, basic, but I love that. She has to come back into the house and now the murderer is in there and it's just great. The other perfectly executed scene is the car crash scene oh man i was gonna yes okay i'm glad we brought this up so well executed i love (coughs) i love the suspense that's built there and again going back to subverting expectations i know going and and going back to the frat house scene i know she's gonna die i know that the killers in the house that death is imminent for her she's out the same thing during that car scene. I know he's going to wake up. Okay. Of course. It's so cliche, so to speak, right? Uh, it's, it's, he's going to wake up. The killer's going to wake up. Is it going to happen while one of them is on top of him and he just stabs? Like, I just love that suspense that you're building, that tension. It's growing, it's growing. And uh, I, it's so good. I actually, I love the fact that, like, well, okay. Okay, one, one, the campus police being idiots, right? Okay, <laughs> we so we established that. Yeah, yes. I know. The fa- <laughs> the, I know like, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle back real fast. The whole the fact that like she gets the threat in the library, and mm-hmm. they put her in some freaking corner, and Cotton shows up, and like yeah. speaks to her for like ten minutes before they even show up and do anything. Like freaking, I would have fired those guys. <laughs> Two, then these these. <laughs> 
then these dough heads are the same guys who are trying to transport her to some <laughs> other location. Of course, Ghostface is going to show up and kill somebody. And they can't even pull their freaking gun out. Oh, my gosh, right? Dude, like, I'm just like, these freaking dough heads. This is one of those times, like, drop the knife or I'll shoot. I'm like, dude, just shoot the guy. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Like, <laughs> he's got the weapon out, man. If I, I was Jaden's pickets, big, come on, just shoot him. Just shoot, just shoot him. Uh, you should have had your gun out already. <laughs> no. and But the fact that, like, that whole car scene happening with the police officer, the crash, the, the you know, the them having – can't even get out of the car. Figuring out, the, you know, like, oh, well, I, you know, you know, Sydney doing her thing. If, you know, like, I'm just – I'm trying to get out of here. Yeah. Right? The fact that she wanted to pull the mask off. Wants to see who it is. Right? Yes. She can't just move. She needs to know who it is. And so then she goes back, right? Ah. Oh. Yeah. And so, like, and uh, just the suspense on that is just – I actually think that they did much better in this in this movie, building suspense at different moments that were key moments for us to be able to to really have really some, some um, shocking payoffs. Yeah. I think overall payoffs, um, like – you know the setup at the very beginning with and the reveal at the end. I don't think were great as as effective, but I think almost almost all the like the buildups and payoffs for the deaths and some of the things. I think for the most part were either shock value or like you know there because the friend didn't also got you know she didn't have no respect. She's like literally died. She yeah. gets a little comment and off to the races. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Which again, the movie starts off with saying you know black people don't make it. In these movies, and I was like, oh, they're going to subvert our expectations with her surviving. No, she doesn't. She doesn't survive, but she's the last one dead. Uh, that's true. Well, no, that's a lie because Derek gets yeah. shot. Yeah. But <clears throat> she's the one, last one killed by, you know, the unknown ghost face. Yeah. Look, that movie is just, or that scene is just incredible. Just it really perfectly is. shot as well. Um, and just the tension with, with the wonderful release. I it, It's great. Um. I wanted to ask you. Oh, I just had it there. Now it's gone. Oh, it's All like. Right. Oh, last thing I kind of want to just like point out the fact that this movie came out within a year of Scream. Yeah. Why can't we have more of this kind of stuff? <sighs> Look, uh, we won't get in a lot into like the production, but but uh, what's his face? Kevin Williamson when he when he pitched these movies, he actually the first one he was trying to get it uh, sold. The script came with a five-page treatment for sequels. Uh, and so when he sold the movie, um, it came with that five-page that five page treatment. And it was great because within two weeks of the success that Scream was, the studio was like, all right, we have a, we have a, a story treatment from Kevin. Let's get going on, on the sequel. And it's interesting because I think Scream in 1998 Eight. This movie came out in 98. Scream 2, right? 97. Uh, 97, yes. Uh, in 1997, Scream, first one, was number 17 in the box office. And Scream 2 was number 18 in the box office. Nice. Because for the first Scream came out in December of 96. So it had enough time, in, in obviously, in, in 97 for it to, um, to get all that box office numbers. But I think that's... That's really – I don't think that every screenplay writer out there is going – I have a story. And here's a, a, a treatment of what sequels could be like. I don't think that's always a good idea to try to pitch that, especially in in the movie climate that we live in where everyone wants some kind of big franchise. But I think it's very smart that you – do build out these characters and you have an idea of where you want to lead them, mm. what commentary you want to provide within this genre. And and so that way when an opportunity comes, boom, you're able to build that out. And I just think that's that's a wonderful like screenwriting technique. Like have a conclusion with your first movie. If you could create more, great. But if you have those ideas already, 
that's that's a great starting point. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't agree. I agreed. I don't know if every screenplay needs that, but if you feel strongly about a film and you like, uh, <clears throat> and I guess I'm, I'm 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 talking specifically. I'm looking at you, Sex Snyder, who <laughs> in your movies you have these big ideas that you're going to explore in the second, third, or fourth movie, right? And you tease it here in this first one. It's like, I don't need that. Tell me the story that you're wanting to tell now. Look at, again, Kevin here, who had the story that he wanted to tell for the first one. Yes, I have ideas for the sequel, but I'm going to hold myself back on the commentary, on characters, whatever it may be. And if I get that opportunity to do it, I have stuff there. But Zack Snyder just loves to tease storylines that are not going to be addressed at all in this first movie, but he hopes to address it. Oh, I have an idea of what's going to happen in the third, fourth, fifth movie, right? And it's like, come on, man. I don't need that. Just tell me right now what I need to know for this. I think this is also another example that, you know, Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. Right? They're, they're just like, oh, it's okay. They're going to come out, right? But we lose trust, right? This movie, yet again, did a great job. I loved it. From yeah. beginning to end, enjoyed it. It's complete. It's done. Do I? Do we need a third one? Did we need? A, did they need a third one at that point? I don't know. Right. Right. We know they did. Mm -hmm. And um, but having the fact that they even had some sort of idea for direction, and provided like ultimately, he told you tell a great story. If you have something more, it could go. That's like these are the things that, that are options. This is kind of where I think, and blah blah blah. Yeah. Great. But not having, ha making it feel like oh, there should this is sequel trying to you tell a sub part story cannot cut it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's I think it's a refreshing take seeing this. Like, oh, that's great that you had these ideas, a five story treatment. If a sequel is is presented, but you didn't like sprinkle anything in this first movie to do so, and and and, and I think there's it's it's a big issue that we live in now. Like you mentioned with the Marvels, the Zack Snyder's of the world, right? Who like to hint things of what could happen, and I know even like it, most I, recently with Deadpool and Wolverine, right? Yeah, and and I know it was a joke where Thor is cradling Deadpool, and he's like, oh, I know what happens. Uh, <laughs> or he makes some comment of like, oh, I hope, hopefully I get called into the next one, right? But like, you tease something, you probably have no idea, but it's like, I don't need that. Like, tell me the story here right yeah. now, right? I don't need to know. I think the other one is uh, um, is with uh, the Fantastic Beast series, right? That was oh, part of yeah. five series, okay? Yeah. It went to three due to all sorts of crazy stuff, yeah. right? I think, you know, look... It's it's just so hard to 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 lock in people for a multi franchise thing, right? Do you know lock it in for even if it's just two films, right? Like you 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 feel confident that if you're gonna do it, don't look at as like Snack, Zack Snyder and Netflix thinking they're gonna get five films. <laughs> yeah, they got five sh shitty films <laughs> with the one story that is retold like seven times and they're all <laughs> bad. Okay, I'm still so mad about the freaking <laughs> Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. <laughs> So am I. Ugh, Rebel Moon. So, maybe we'll revisit it for uh, the. It's one year and it didn't come out a year ago this month. We are not revisiting it. Yeah, it's no. got to be ten years. I will revisit in ten years, maybe fifteen. I uh, I just I, I I told you I tried watching the sequel, the second one. I told you not to. And I I, got I told like you not twenty to. minutes, and I'm like, this is boring. I'm done. I told you, I almost, I almost, I was literally this close to doing um, his, his, his version. Oh, the, the, the director's cut one. Yeah. Under a different name because they didn't, they didn't want, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't, folks didn't want to freaking have to deal with the hot mess of marketing. Oh, what it, yeah. Anyways. Gosh. Um, yeah, I'm, I just, I'm, no, I'm not going to, I went to go do it and I was like, no, what am I doing? <laughs> I know it's going to suck. The first one's going to suck. It's only like 30 minutes more and it's all Blood and nude. So who cares? And it's slow motion still. So And a lot more slow motion. I feel like you describing that is me, how I describe going for that cookie at late at night. I know I shouldn't. <laughs> I want to do it. It's going to cost me heartburn or whatever. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Fine, Zack Snyder, give it to me. <laughs> ah, disappointment. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, yeah. I've had my last heartburn. <laughs> Zack Snyder heartburn. Oh, man. <clears throat> Look, I love this movie. I'm excited to watch another one. I think I'm going to... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the third one I, pretty I, soon. I'm is there is it go third? How many more are there? Let's see. There's because the soft reboot was the fifth. Oh, okay. So so third and fourth, I'll I'll probably watch and get caught up with the the, the most because the, they're gonna have the next one the next, next one. year. Yeah, right? yeah, next year. Yeah, we should both. We should. Yeah, we'll go to that one yeah, together. We will. Yeah. yeah. We will. I don't know. Great stuff, man. I'm, I'm so happy we, that we went back to this one. So, last question is, it, which is this: Did this movie outdo the first? No, uh, I don't think it did. I, I, I think, I think the just the shock of a movie of what Scream did. Scream. It, we did a whole episode on it, obviously. Um, but like the way it set itself up as this horror commentary movie on horrors, as horror is happening, is just genius in and of itself. And what this one tries to do with like sequels and you know upping the ante and whatnot, I see where it's going. But I already have that expectation as a viewer, having watched the first one. Yes, the killings are a little bit more intricate, but I just there's just something about that first one, even from the its iconic opening scene with Drew Barrymore, like it just ah, no, I don't think so. I'm not saying it's a bad movie by any means, no, not. but no, I, I think Scream continues to be just better than this. I went into this film thinking, you know what? I think I, this I like this better than the first one. Oh, really? But after our discussion. I do not think that it's better than the first one. No. And ultimately, it comes down to the letdown of the reveal. Mm-hmm. It's not a good enough reveal. It's an okay reveal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if, you know, here's one thought that I had. Would it have been better if we had gotten, instead of Mickey first, we got the mom the first? The mom first. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that might have been better. I think it just would part of. I think if they had, if they had played out that part first, uh, Billy, what's the last name? Anyways, Billy's mom, mm-hmm. who's left him, and she's like changed, and like the full shock from uh, Sydney realizing this, and the fact that like. Part of that being triggering, triggering her the fact that like it's like the fact that she killed the son, uh, Billy, and that her mom, the mom, to a degree, the you know left the circumstances for him to maybe you know lose it uh, and want to start doing this th- these killings. Mm-hmm. Um, stop, kids! Uh, I just remembered. Oh no, man. <laughs> My parents are going to be so <laughs> mad. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, it just – that would have hit hard. Because like I, we didn't have to because we, we – we, the reveal for us – because it, it's an instant reveal for her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's a it's a first time reveal for us. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas the – it's like, oh. And there's a personal connection there, right? Whereas this one, yeah, we know Mickey but like – we don't really know Mickey. He's a new character. Yeah. He's also he he was kind of in and out of the movie. Uh, there really isn't. I mean, was there ever like a scene between? No, there's no. He doesn't like there isn't. He's he's part of the f- friend group. Yeah, he's like Derek's friend to some degree, or you know, because he's also in Randy's. He's part of some. Maybe he's part of the sorority. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Again, like he's around, but it's not like it's not like he's. He's truly involved in yeah, the group. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It would have been nice to say, because, like, again, that, oh my goodness, that rewrite would have been so good. So the the script was leaked for this movie. This is early days of the internet. Oh. And the script, script was leaked a couple of years ago, like literally two years ago. Uh, Kevin Williamson said that, oh, it was a fake uh, script that we leaked. 
I don't know how true that is. I think that's just him saving face. But suppose, but there was a, a, a script that was leaked, and then they had to rewrite it. Uh, but now he claims that it was a fake one that they let out to mm. build hype, or to build hype, or to lead people off. Um, so there were several stuff out there, and I wonder how many times that ending got was shifted. got shifted and rewritten um, to I, to yeah. keep that. Yeah, I could see how that would be the case. But honestly, that would be that that even just that one little change. It wouldn't even be huge. It's just like a little that one yeah. little change would have made that that movie. It would have hit just as hard. It would have yeah. made it like probably just right on par with the first one, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with the reveal and everything that happened, and and maybe pushed it over the edge because some of those deaths were just a little you know hit a little bit harder um, overall. But yeah, yeah. Last yeah. thought. I said it last year, and I'll say it again. If Matthew Lillard is not in any of these sequels, I will throw this table. I will be so <laughs> mad. He better come back. I just want more of Stewart. And I know in the third movie he was supposed to come back, and he didn't. So I know that he's not going to be in the third one. He better be in the fourth or in the fifth or the sixth or this new one that's coming out. Or else I will. No one at me. I don't, I don't want this spoiled to me. I just know he's not in the third. He was supposed to be, but he's not. Yeah. So. Man, well, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode discussing Scream 2. Don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you get your podcast. If you like this episode, please leave us a review. It does help us get discovered. More importantly, we want to hear from you. What do you think of Scream 2? Does it hold up after all these years? What did we miss? You can always message us at your at realchumps.com or you can connect with us on any of our socials at realchumps. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Marstrosity, M-A-R-Z-T-R-O-S-I-T-Y. And me at Rubio underscore TV or Rubio.TV. Join us next week as we begin our month long of Broadway musicals adapted to film with Jersey Boys. You won't want to miss it. We're doing this because your biggest hyped movie of the year is Wicked. Dude, I'm pumped. I'm so pumped. Yeah, no, I know. And so we're doing a whole month. We're stepping out of at least my comfort zone, and doing Broadway musical uh, adaptations to film. So, yeah, join us on this journey because we'll see how well we do. I think you're going to enjoy it. Look, I look. Jersey Boys is a great one. So I'm excited. I guess we'll find out how the rest of them play. We'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>